I'm Jeff Brown with America's Charities, and 27 years ago, almost to this very date, I was working at United Way of America. I was fresh out of college. I had exciting jobs like making copies of VHS tapes or taking slideshows to exotic places like Tom's Rivers, New Jersey, or Evansville, Indiana. And I was uh, doing my job one day, and my big boss came down and said, Jeff, Tomorrow at 8 a.m. in Alexandria, we're shooting the CFC film, and we need an extra. Can you be there? <laughs> and so you're, you're right out of college. You're like, yeah, of course, of course, I'll be there. Where, where do I need to be? What do I need to wear? And he goes, you're going to play a, kind of a construction worker who's leaving his house in the morning and waving goodbye to his family, and uh, can you just wear jeans and like a flannel shirt? And I'm like, okay, sure. So the next morning I show up, and they start rolling, and I do about 10 takes of turning around and waving goodbye to my make-believe family. And uh, he goes, okay, cut. Great. Great job, Jeff. And so I'm, like, thinking, oh, wow, I made my big boss happy. I'm in a film. And then I go to myself, what is the CFC? <laughs> and that was the first time I ever heard of the CFC. But now through the years, after editing the national campaign films and then producing them, and then working here with the local CFC for four years, and then now six years with America's Charities, helping campaign managers and all of you uh, reach out to potential donors, you can say that I, I know the answer to what the CFC is now. And I know most of you know what the CFC is as well, but today there's probably some questions you have about the changes to the CFC that are going to be coming up in 2017. And that's why we have a panel here today to address what those changes are, where they stand in their implement, implementation prog, uh, process, and uh, to offer you a, a chance to uh, ask a few questions uh, about what it's going to mean to uh, all of us. And I'm very proud today of uh, the panel we have because I couldn't think of three people to have up here to be able to talk about the the regulation changes and the CFC in general than the people we have here. And the first one we have is Mr. Keith Willingham, who's the director of the Combined Federal Campaign uh, at the U.S. Office of Personnel Management. Uh, as the director of the largest and most successful workplace giving campaign in the world, he uh, develops policies and strategies and provides oversight to uh, programs that include nearly 25 thousand charities worldwide and since its inception the CFC has raised over seven billion that's billion with a B uh, he has been a key contributor when it comes to the regulation changes and today he is here to talk about just what these changes entail and how they will make the campaign more vibrant and eventually more successful uh, our second panelist here is Steve Paletta he was originally on the agenda and then we, we took him off, uh, not because we didn't like him, but because tonight his daughter is going to play in the NCAA lacrosse tournament up in Ithaca, New York, and he was trying to see if he could m make his way to be here and to be at the, the uh, tournament tonight. And we're very, very lucky to have him uh, be able to, to speak today and make it and hopefully uh, bring home a victory this evening. <laughs> uh, he won a reality TV show hosted by uh, somebody uh, that you might have seen on TV named Oprah Winfrey. Uh, she have, the name of the show was The Big Give, and this victory on that show launched his company, Give Back. And it's the Give Back Foundation that has been hired to be the Central Campaign Administrator, or the CCA. And as Steve uh, said, there are going to be a lot of acronyms today. On the flash drive you have there, there is a sheet that defines all of what they are. If you have any questions at any point uh, today, just come to me and I'll try to get you through the <laughs> alphabet. Uh, the, 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 the new portal that he is creating is a central portal. And it's, I was very, very impressed by hearing him at the OPM training in Baltimore a couple weeks ago with his passion and his enthusiasm for this site. And today uh, he's going to explain where the, the portal stands and how it's going to eventually uh, reach out to more donors and make them more engaged when it comes to giving. And uh, the, the mission of the Give Back Foundation, I, I really liked this uh, mission he had. It, 
was called Empowering More People to Give More to More Charities More Often. And uh, I'm very happy to have him here today to talk about uh, the, the portal. Uh, Rama Latin here is the, for lack of a better term, campaign manager of the Naval Department here in D.C. The official title is the uh, head of charitable campaign, uh, the campaign, charitable campaigns administrator. And she's been on that job since 2007. Uh, and they've raised over $20 million during that time, including 2.7 just this past campaign. And to put that number into a little context, if the Department of the Navy here in the D.C. area was its own separate CFC, it would be the 12th largest CFC in the country. Mm -hmm. So uh, she's obviously done a fantastic job. Uh, you've maybe run into her at some of the uh, fairs. She runs two of the uh, largest here, the, the NAVC uh, fair down at the uh, Navy Yard, as well as the Office of Naval Intelligence, and plenty other in between. Um, She's also been awarded with two, two awards that are, are, are pretty prestigious. In 2013, she was named the Department of Defense Campaign Manager of the Year. And just this past year, she was named the, one of the DOD Civilian Public Service Award winners. And the reason that is so pr prestigious, because here in the nation's capital, there are 80,000 civilian DOD workers, but only 34 were recognized, and Rama was one of them. So I'm very happy to have her here. She is one of my favorite people in the land of CFC. So I, <laughs> she, uh, she, she's really going to uh, provide some insight. And we have Steve uh, on the panel as well. He, there's probably nobody in the room that has more experience with the combined federal campaign than Steve. And he is going to talk about the role of federations in, in the CFC and what our role will be once the new regulations go into effect. But uh, first, I'd like to start out with, uh, with Keith. Uh, I had the pleasure of hearing him uh, in Baltimore two weeks ago. He gave a, a report on the uh, implementation progress, and uh, he has, he's going to give kind of a mini version of his speech right now. So Keith, please. Thank you, Jeff. Again, I'm, you. I'm truly humbled to be here to talk to you all today. And again, uh, thanks to Stephen and Jeff and his team. Um, I think I was on the job maybe about two months, and we, we had coffee at the old Ebbett Grill, and you were starting to give me the lay of the land right there. So, I was already yelling. yeah, he was already <laughs> in my ear. But um, it was a, it was a good thing because I needed to be educated about what the real impact of this program is on organizations, charities, and the community. And it was sort of a very good backdrop. So I'm not. I tell you, I was very impressed with the the video clip I just saw, uh, Susie. Um, Soza uh, with Verb, um, it, it just shows you how much more we still have yet to do in terms of our movement forward with this program. And, and some of the things that we're doing are pretty draconian to a lot of people, but what I saw there was just off the chart. So um, I'm just going to power through this really quickly. Again, I don't have a lot of luck with these clickers, so if I, if I end up going too fast, please bear with me. But what I wanted to do is, before we get into the future, just do a quick look back. Um, um, a couple weeks ago, I, I presented uh, the industry with the results of the 2015 campaign. And this slide just shows a quick narrative between 2014 and 2015. But I got to say, even with this backdrop, having federal employees pledge almost $180 million to charities over a three or four month period is still phenomenal to me. Um, even though those numbers were down from last year, uh, there were a couple bright spots. There were about 30 campaigns that actually had an uptick in participation. And I need to update our slide on the OPM website because I see you've captured $7 billion. We have now tipped over the $8 billion mark. So I'm very excited about what federal employees are doing to, to make a difference in their community as well. And so sort of to get behind the numbers a little bit, <clears throat> I don't know if many of you know this, but federal employees have only really been able to give online to make their pledges for about 10 years. Let me say that one more time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a federal call. employees have only <laughs> been able to use electronic ways of giving. They've used paper before this. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking paper, I'm talking carbon, like three ply. 
um, for the last 10 years. And so this graphic just shows the impact in the last five. And so right now of the $178 million pledged, almost 100 million came in online. So it just shows you how quickly injecting the tool or the tool into the system, how quickly people have gravitated to using it. And so to go to the other extreme, the number of donors who are participating is up to almost 40%. And the reason why this is significant for me is that we have about 140 campaigns across the world, and only 90 of them have an online giving tool. And we're still penetrating like 40%. So anybody who is finally giving to the CFC is doing it online at a quicker pace than any other way doing it. And so um, talked a little bit about the, the transformation that CFC is going through. And uh, many of you know that we went, have to go through a, an entire regulatory process in order to make any change in the government. So change in the government is slow. But I tell you, this change has actually been pretty rapid in terms of getting it through policy, getting things written, getting through Congress and things like that. So we set up um, last year as a result of our, our annual training. They wanted, uh, the community wanted us to have a transition council, somebody that OPM could go to to sort of fact check the way we were doing things, how we were implementing our processes. And so those are the list of the folks that were on the transition council. And so they were asked to be part of some specific subcommittees that we had set up to deal with what we called some thorny issues. Um, and so you'll see some folks in there. In fact, uh, Tony DeCristofaro is on our, uh, our sub, uh, transition council, and he has a wealth of experience in the nonprofit world. Uh, Larry Heisel also was on our transition council, who is now a federal employee, and uh, he has a wealth of knowledge in, in various venues. So, we did take this seriously. We wanted to set up something formal so that we can transition in the right way. Back when I took this job, um, I was told that not every federal employee, even though we have been raising $8 billion over the course of 55 years, we still in the modern era do not have campaigns in every federal agency. So there are literally pockets of employees who cannot give to the CFC because we have not built out a system for them to do so. So for example, in Texas, there are a lot of counties in which federal employees actually go to work every day, but they cannot give. And so I told the previous director this, and she just didn't even think that was possible. So as a result of the transition that we're making for 2017, we're going to ensure that every federal employee, no matter whether they're in a postal service in Abilene, Texas, or they work in Washington, D.C., can give to the CFC. And so that just means more opportunity for folks like you to be, um, to be listed in their area so that they can participate and give to your charities. Um, and so we're talking hundreds of thousands of individuals being dropped into our system once we build out this central site. So that's what the new form uh, zone will look like. Now we have about 140 campaigns around the country. We're now going to limit it to 39, but we will cover every federal employee worldwide. So part of the transition, which allows us to move forward with centralizing, um, as I mentioned, building the central data web portal, which allow all employees to give and will allow all charities to give to us online. Right now I have boxes of paper in my office of charity applications. It's unreal. If you would actually look at it, it feels like I stepped into the twilight zone. We will be able to actually have that all be online and we can check the data in terms of charity eligibility in one spot, which for us will be huge. It will be also huge for the local campaigns that have to review the applications. So this is a quick snapshot of the milestones that we came up in terms of the target dates that we wanted to have. And I just wanted to point out a couple. Um, we plan to issue a notice of requirement for outreach coordinators by the end of this month. And essentially what our regs do now, it separates charitable marketing from pledge processing and collecting cash and dispersing it to charities. And so the outreach coordinator is actually the group that will focus on marketing and educating employees about the campaign. Right now, the, the process is commingled, 
And so the organization that currently manages the campaign also collects the money and disperses it. And I gotta be honest with you, sometimes I'm not sure how much time they spend on each one. And so this allows us to also allow uh, professional marketers to get involved, nonprofit organizations as well as for-profit to sort of raise the bar in terms of the outreach that's going to be made to federal employees. Our plan is also to raise the application fees no later than October of this year. Um, as was mentioned earlier or maybe in the Q&A, um, the regulations um, give us an opportunity to charge application fees for processing, uh, the cost of processing the applications. Um, in, in our system, so that fee schedule will be issued later on this year. Um, we also, around the same time, pl uh, plan to roll out our training for the new application system. As Jeff mentioned, we had some screenshots of some of our initial design uh, that we showed a couple weeks ago, and, I, and I'll, you know, I'll give Steve some time to talk about that if we get to that point. But I think it's very sleek, and it's very interesting, and it's very uh, concise. Um, certainly a lot more concise than the system that we have now. And we project that we will open the applications to charities to uh, start putting in their applications by December of this year. Um, so that's kind of where we're trending in terms of the timeline. A couple other uh, last notes. Um, the online charity application that we're projecting right now for 2017 will be January 30th, 2017. And that will be for local and national applications. Um, <clears throat> so I really want to talk about the future. So that was kind of a look back, and I know these slides I think will be available to all of you, and certainly we can, uh, I can answer any questions. I like that they have a counter up here that's going back so I can stay on point. But um, I'm really jacked about the future of the campaign, and two things. One is uh, the, the changes that we're making that allow federal employees for the first time to all be able to give online and that will reach all federal employees. And then two, I'm also working with the administration to sort of do a, a rewrite or a refresh of the executive order that created the CFC. And as you can imagine, I'm running out of time with this administration, right? Um, they've got a lot of things on their plate, but they, they have an office of public engagement that's very interested in the CFC. And what we have put forth to them is to allow, give OPM the authority to be able to allow retirees to have deductions of CFC contributions comes right out of their annuity checks. And so for us, that's huge because we have another population of employees, former employees, who are very engaged, they're very civic-minded. And we're talking about between the military and the, and the um, postal and the civil service retiree pool is about 4 million people right now who really have been on the sidelines. And so this offers us up an opportunity to engage them, connect with them, allow a system that they can have their actual uh, annuity roll checks um, have CFC deductions taken out of them, and then you all will be the beneficiaries of that. Steve had also talked about uh, volunteerism, how it's very important that corporations reach out to, especially the younger generation, but again, the mature folks are also very um, civic-minded and want to get involved in volunteerism, but our program isn't necessarily linked to volunteerism. And so this executive order will also, for the first time, link CFC to volunteerism opportunities. And as we talk about with the platform that we're building, we'll also be able to have them be able to track their uh, interests on volunteering opportunities in the platform. So I'm really excited about not only the changes that we're already working on, but the, the new authority that we are focusing on trying to get this administration to give us to, to have. And with that, I'm really going to want to turn it over to Steve to talk about the new platform that we're building and just sort of uh, how we see our vision aligning in terms of the Give Back Foundation. We'll, we'll have time for questions at the end, right? Yes. Great. <coughs> thank you, Keith, and thank you all for having me here. It's uh, truly a uh, privilege, and uh, I'm glad I was able to make it work out, and I do hope my daughter wins tonight. So. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just to give you a really quick history of Give Back and what the Give Back platform has been about and why it aligns so well with Keith's vision and where the CFC is going. Uh, when I launched Give Back, I had basically the Give Back Foundation, I had one mission in mind, and that was we called it Empower the Everyday Philanthropist. Uh, through that television show that I was on, Oprah Winfrey really inspired me to think about each and every person as a philanthropist, whether you give away $5, $50, or $500. You are as important in the philanthropic world as a Bill Gates or a Warren Buffett. And we wanted to create a platform that 
really um, it, it celebrated those people and empowered them to make a difference. And the way the Give Back, the Give Back platform works is each and every individual, each and every federal employee will be able to set up their own, their own giving account, one place where they can manage their giving. And they ultimately can manage that throughout the year, which is something that we're talking about how we're going to do that with the CFC. But it's one place where they can support their favorite charities. They can support through the federations and, through, and directly to charities where they can donate on a regular basis, whether those are recurring donations or one-time donations, and track that all to really make them see the difference that they're making in the world. And then also have that, that platform available for the, the, the uh, charities to be able to co connect with those, with those donors as well. And so GiveBack was launched back in 2011 uh, initially as a direct consumer where anybody could come on and set up an account. But we've sort of morphed over more towards a workplace giving platform where we were trying to encourage and empower each and every employee to be the philanthropist they wanted to be, to connect to the charities that they wanted to connect to, and to support the causes that they cared about were nearest and dearest to their heart. And so uh, I guess it was about a year and a half ago when the CFC first put out its sources, sources sought. Uh, the Give Back Foundation looked at that. And, and to be honest with you, I was shocked at how well the vision of what Keith set out and what five years of regulation, and I know, Steve, you had lots of input into this, how, how those two things came together. Because as, um, as was said earlier, our mission has become one thing and one thing only, to empower more people, to give more to more charities more often. That's our entire goal. We don't want to be a, a, any type of an organization like you people are the ones who do the work out in the world. You're the ones who make a difference. We're just trying to create a platform that allows you to connect to those donors and allows those donors to make it simple to give to you. And so when Keith set up this thing around 4.2 million employees, federal employees, how do we empower them to become the philanthropists they want to be? How do we make it so that each and every federal employee has access to the CFC and they all have a similar experience? Whether you're uh, in the military in, in Texas or you're in the Navy in some nuclear sub underneath the water somewhere, how could you find your favorite charity? How could you make a pledge right there? And how could everyone have that same experience? And also, how could you as the charities reach every single, every single one of those 4.2 million employees and hopefully an additional 4 million retirees. And that's what the Give Back platform is all about. So the new platform is, is, um, is taking what Give Back has done. And obviously, since now it's with the federal government, we have to do a little bit more. There's a lot more safety and security. There's a lot more features. And there's a lot more that we're doing for charities. And especially what we're doing to help the federations achieve their goals, which is they support you. And they, create, and they make it better for you to fundraise. So there's a, new, a whole new charity platform that's being built where charities, through their federations, are able to uh, apply and become part of the CFC. And that is a standardized, uh, a standardized application. It's all online. It should be pretty simple. But more importantly, the, the review process will be more simple for all of the LFCCs. And I don't even know what LFCC means. I should. <laughs> but whatever that is, those are these lo the local, local campaigns. I know. <laughs> Actually, I don't. But that, uh, to, to, for them to be able to review and, and make sure that you as charities are approved and you know where you stand and you're able to do that. And obviously working with, the, with America's charities is going to make that even easier. And what we're trying to do is provide a tool so that America's charities and the federations can provide even a better service to you as, as, as an individual charity. And once you're signed up and you're part of that list and you've applied, well, then it's accessible to those 4.2 million people. And then in 2017, um, we'll roll this out, the new platform for each individual employee of the federal government. And as I said, it all starts with them setting up their account. They'll be able to go through and manage their pledge. They'll be able to find you, all the great charities. And then what we're really thinking about, and this may be a little further down the road, is how do we create that communication structure? Because let's face it, the people who are giving you, whether it's $5 or $50 or $500, they want to know what you're talking about. Steve, when you talked about ROI, well, you know, I think ROI always comes down to numbers. I don't think that's really what it's necessarily about with charities, but it's about communication. It's about if I've given money, how do I know that um, your organization or your organization, what have you done with my money and who have you impacted? Imagine if there is a site provided by the CFC that allows that communication to take place. 
And then we could dream, and, and Steve, uh, Steve and I love to dream, but Steve works for the federal government, so he kicks me every once in a while and says, hey, hey, <laughs> this is the federal government. We can't move that quickly. But the truth is, uh, in, in Keith Willingham, you, ha you have a director who really has a long-term vision for this. And um, what I said the other day in Baltimore is that this is really a collaboration. This is something that we need all of the charities to embrace. We need the America's Charities and the Federations to embrace, which I know they have, to look at this over the long haul and see, imagine if we could take that $200 million and how do we use not only technology, because we're only one piece of it, but how do we use the federations to be able to promote it? How do we use the charities to be able to connect to those people to change that $200 million into $400 million and then to $600 million? My goal, as I said in Baltimore, is to have 100% participation, 4.2 million people participating. That may be a little aggressive, but we can get there. I really do believe that if we make it an engaging platform, and we make the CFC more than just a, a campaign, we make the CFC actually a way of life, well, then all of a sudden there will be 4.2 million people participating, and hopefully all of your donations go up not only by 2x or 5x or 10x, but who knows where it could go. And so hopefully one day we'll be talking here and we'll be sitting here we'll talk about that $20 billion Absolutely. that we've raised. Absolutely. So I'm honored to be a part of this. I'm honored that uh, the Give Back Foundation has been chosen. I'm honored to work with great organizations like America's Charities and, and all of your chari the charities here. Our focus, plain and simple, empower that everyday philanthropist. If we can create more, uh, more givers, more people giving more, more often to more charities, then we've succeeded at our mission. So thank you for having me here today. Thank you very much, Steve. Now, uh, in the weeks leading up to this, we offered you all a chance to ask some questions uh, online ahead of time so we could uh, turn to the uh, panel and ask them. And overwhelmingly, the number one question was about events. What is the new regulations? What does it mean to events? Are there still going to be events? That was the question. It was one sentence. Are there still going to be events? So, Keith, in 2016, how are events going to work? And in 2017, what is going to be the one difference in them? Um, 2016 will operate just as it has. Um, uh, folks like Rama will be able to reach out and, and work with charities. To, uh, for charity fairs, yeah. uh, agencies will be able to, uh, uh, employees will be able to participate in, in charity events. Uh, we'll be still raising money in, in the agency. Um, one of the things that has sort of been sort of a thorn for me is cash walking around the agency. Um, so we will have one more year of that at least. Um, and then we will pivot to uh, a, a more charity, uh, fair, uh, educational event style event format. And so the idea is not to, um, to have the events cease or not occur in the agencies. It's to talk about the communication where the charities can come in and talk to employees about what they're doing in the community, their mission, how they're uh, impacting the community. Because oftentimes, I think back in, uh, in 1984, I believe it was, the National Capital Area only had 2,200 charities listed in its brochure. It's now up to 4,000. So how does an employee make sense of 4,000 charities in its local area and talking about what it does and differentiating itself? It's pretty tough. It's almost like, and it's not a knock on them, but the Cheesecake Factory. You've got 30 minutes for lunch, and you go to the Cheesecake Factory, and then they bring the menu out. It's, it's like a dictionary. You know? <laughs> so your default is to order what you did the last time, right? You don't really investigate any of the other options. And I think this gives us a unique opportunity to have events with charity missions in mind and bringing employees together to be able to, to understand exactly what it is you all do in the community. And I, and I really want Rama yeah, to kind of... I, I'd like to um, kind of chime in um, a little bit. Um, thank you, everyone, for um, giving me this opportunity. I, I'm really honored to be in the room with a, a group of great... Um, folks and philanthropists and um, quite outstanding folks like you, um, just to kind of chime in um, and explain um, how ex exciting that this is to um, have an opportunity to actually educate and train the donors. I mean, this, this is what we do. Um, in the Department of Navy, we host several events um, as far as awareness events that are, um, when we call them awareness events, because the whole, the whole idea of charity fairs, I think, I mean, it's great, but we explain to our, um, our donors 
attend this awareness event because you're providing awareness, you're providing an, a platform of education so that the donors can understand what it is that they're donating to and what, what, I, what, what, what it is that they're going to uh, make a choice to donate their money. And so we, in the Department of Navy, we host uh, several events. We host about three to four awareness events um, throughout the year. And within those awareness events, uh, the donors ask questions, um, and they really focus on things that are going on in their lives, or they're, or they're asking questions on something that they feel proud about. For, for a quick example, I have a friend of mine who uh, just suffered from um, uh, an aortic dissection. And so she literally um, was focused on, and she's, in a, she's a federal employee, and she has family, and her sister works for the Veterans Administration. And so she has family that are, that's focused on learning about the, you know, learning about the, the, cha the charity that's focused on that. And so when we do these awareness events, so folks like her, I would go to her and say, hey, what is, what is important to you? She said, well, now that I've had this aortic, aortic dissection and I've suff you know, she suffered and she survived it, she, she now has a passion. She has passion behind it. She knows what she wants. She knows why she wants to give to that organization. And so we make it our business to um, teach the donors and, and, and provide the donors with lots of education through the awareness event. So when you do come to these organizations, explain to them what you're doing. Educate them. Let them know. Provide feedback. Let them know what the money is, the money that they're donating, what the money is going to do um, so that they're, they're not just waiting and wondering, um, you know, how is this going to be um, a good, you know, a good, a good place for them to donate. Um, Definitely, um, you know, making it available online, um, I think, is one of the biggest things the Department of Navy we push. Um, online giving has been um, kind of like a savior uh, for us because uh, a lot of our donors, they will go through books. Um, I, I, wanna, I won't say millennials, but I want to say that, the, um, you know, just anyone that has access to the Internet, they're looking more to kind of just go online and do research and find out what's more important, why is it important. And so they're looking, you know, they're not just going, they're, they're going to go with your word of mouth, however, they're going to also do research um, themselves. So making sure that they know um, why they're donating, what they're donating to. And just to kind of cap this off, once the CFC is connected with the concept of volunteerism, the events take on a whole different mm -hmm. viewpoint because yes. then you can offer up the volunteering opportunity yes. that is going to be sanctioned by the government that has not necessarily been there before. So I think the events will it will be even more critical for the awareness part mm -hmm. and the educational part of what charities are doing, and now they can connect directly to the federal employee and talk about any volunteering opportunities that are out there. Yeah. And I like that fact, we'll get to questions in just a couple minutes, Laura. Um, the fact that they're using the term awareness fair, uh, I think we all know what a charity fair is, and we've heard about it forever, but it's getting to be kind of a staid term, and it doesn't really provide a lot of excitement. But an awareness fair, uh, I think, provides a lot of more broader thought and could generate more uh, participation and more people coming to them. Uh, Raman, let me ask you one question real sure. quick. Uh, loan executives or federal employees that are virtually loaned to the local CFC to help uh, run it and act as a conduit between the, man, the uh, marketing side and the federal employees, will loan executives still be part of the process? And if so, what role do you see them playing once the new regulations come into effect? So, yes. Yeah. So for the 2016 campaign, the loaned executives will still be part of the process. Uh, right now, um, for, in the Department of Navy, we're actually soliciting for uh, uh, loaned executives. And uh, our, for me, my loaned executives are my base. My loaned executives are the folks that I go to. They're my go-to. They're my boots on ground. They're my core team. And they literally are the ones that, these individuals are the ones that will interact with my outside campaigns. They're the ones that are um, interacting with my coordinators. They're the ones that are interacting with the uh, main commands. Um, however, they're kind of the boots on ground, if you want to call it. And they're, they're the folks that will do the training. They're, they will um, interact um, with uh, 
with charities um, as well. So when we host these awareness events, you might get a phone call or two from the loan executives to say, um, we would like for you to, uh, to attend this organization or come on board to this organization. So yes, the loan executives are very important and yes, and they will be part of our 2016 campaign. Okay, thank you. And into the future. Uh, one of the other questions that came up uh, a lot during this pre-question period that we had online had to do with the application fee uh, and how that will work when 2017 rolls around. Uh, and the, the questions were kind of like, why is this formula taking so long to come up with? Okay. Keith, what, uh, not to put you on the spot, but I know you, you have a, you, I heard his answer in Baltimore, so I know. Well, I, I'll be honest with you. You know, we had a series of recommendations that were um, provided to OPM by a group of experts, industry leaders, federal employees, oversight groups, uh, called the CFC 50 Commission. And one of the recommendations they made to us was, hey, we believe, the commission believe that a lot of donors are not giving through the CFC because with technology now, they have other ways of giving. And so the cost of the CFC is too expensive. You know, donations are coming off the top from my gift. You know, this is something that we, that you all need to address. And so the commission's recommendation was that we would, instead of uh, taking the gift off the top, the, uh, the donor's gift would go 100% to the campaign, and then the campaign cost itself would be covered by application fees. And so we designed the regulation so that we have a couple of options in terms of fee development. One could be an upfront fee, another is a listing fee, another is sort of a back-end fee, which is how it's done now. And so we're wrestling with, we have a rate model that we've developed. And in that rate model we've developed, we basically have taken all of the costs for the last four campaigns and dropped it into this rate model. And it's produced different results. We, we're doing sensitivity analysis. We're taking in geography into account in terms of the size of the campaign area, the donor behaviors in the area. And so we have come up with such a variation in how campaign costs are um, actually come about uh, we have one campaign and it costs 70 cents per donor for them to give. We have another campaign where it costs a dollar 50 cents per donor. And we're saying, well, why is that? And so we actually have a pretty rigorous process that we're going through in this, in this rate model and trying to come up what is the right amount of upfront fee to be associated with the campaign so we don't set the bar too high and be a uh, barrier to entry. And then the listing fee be set at a different level. So that means that you're actually in the campaign. Your charity has been approved. And then so that's attributable to printing materials, distribution, and the like. And then if we can't cover our full cost, up front in those two fee categories, then we also have the option of taking it out of the pledge. But we want to have that be as small as possible because we really want the value to be to the donor that all of the, uh, as much money as possible is actually going to the charity itself. So that was a long answer for well, it. Was, it's, it's a good answer. It was the answer. Okay. Um, no, yes, let me Steve. just, and I know there's a bunch of questions, but this is kind of a statement and a question. So. Uh, to Keith's um, point earlier, one of the roles the federations play, one of the things we did on your behalf was, quite frankly, argue with OPM quite a lot about the fee structure, um, the rationale, the philosophy behind it. Um, there's a lot of things that uh, we're, we're, Keith and I are, we're, we're good friends, but we've had to go to battle on some things, which is the way it works. We're still good friends. And we're still good friends. <laughs> um, and in that environment, you win some, you lose some. And while I'm not thrilled with the, the fee structure, or at least because I don't know exactly what it will be, I do think that, in general, what you're talking about is simply taking the cost of the campaign and taking them out at a different point of the transaction. Correct. In, in its essence. And I, I'm not going to put Keith on the spot and ask him if he thinks it's going to be about the same cost, but my guess would be it's not going to be an astronomical amount of money. Correct. Am I, am I correct there? Correct. So I'm just trying to give you a sense of that. But I'm also at the same time trying to say in our discussions with OPM, and we had lots, I testified to CFC 50 Commission, we talked in front of Congress, we've had many meetings. Yeah. OPM was flexible and did listen to us in the federations on some other things. I'm very excited about the consolidation of the back room and the technology because, Correct. frankly, 
at one point you had 220 local United Ways that were all running CFC campaign funds through their local books and all of them taking their cut out of it. And they were allowed to, but it was just an administrative nightmare that technology eliminates. Solved, correct. That, so there's a cost savings there. Number two is the idea of having people professionally market the campaign, I think is fantastic conceptually. Um, I think it's going to be an iterative process. Sure. Um, you know, we've talked to the other federations about should we be one of those marketing entities? Who, who will they be? So there's a lot that we're going to learn, particularly in 17 and 18, about going forward. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think we all got to a place where we felt comfortable that decisions had been made. Now let's work within the environment. Let's see what we can do to make it work. Um, and, you know, all I'm hearing is all good things here. As soon as we know what the fee is, you know, we'll feel probably a little better, I hope. Yeah, so. <laughs> and, and, and it'll, it'll change. Again, we, yeah. we have the flexibility to set that fee every year, and, of course, we don't want it to vary too much, but we want the philosophy to be that it's not a barrier to entry. Um, but we also understand that with 25,000, you know, uh, charities, you know, some of them don't get any pledges. And, but yet and still, the other charities are subsidizing them. Um, so this sort of normalizes that as best as we can understand. And the other thing, and I'll, I'll talk about this briefly, I won't get into the weeds on this, is that um, there were, um, back when we, you know, back in 2000, there were probably about 400 payroll processors that took these um, deductions out of federal checks. Unbelievable mass uh, confusion on how to get everything done. So now there are five major shared service providers that manage about 90% of the allotments that come out of federal employees' checks. So in the old model, there was a lot of shrinkage. So even if an employee pledged $100, the, the amount of money that went to the charity could have been reduced by 20% if that population of federal employees was allowed to move from agency to agency. And so uh, Rama may not have experienced this, but I've had a lot of different federal jobs, and as people move from agency to agency, they do not have their charities get picked up when they go to the next agency. And so there's automatic shrinkage to you. This process that we now have with the centralized processor serving, working with the shared service mm -hmm. providers, we will make sure that if employee goes from NASA to Homeland Security and has pledged $100, that $100 is deducted. So again, that's one of the sentinel effects of moving to a centralized system that many of you are probably not even aware of. It helps us work with our federal shared service providers much cleaner to make sure, just like health insurance, you don't lose your health insurance when you go from one federal agency to another. So you should not lose your CFC deduction either. And so this solves that. Okay, uh, let's open it up. Let's open up some questions. Laura from make -A -Wish, I saw your hand first, so please start us off. Thank you, and thank you so much. This has been an incredible, amazing, informative panel, so super excited. Um, much to Rama's point, so these events are super important in engaging the donors with our missions, but I feel like you have a very small window of time from the moment that they hear about your mission to when they make that donation, and so there's a benefit to having the paper because they're right then and there. It's easy here, do and done. If it's online, I was curious if you guys have um, thoughts about doing kiosks or tablets with your boots on the ground individuals so, so they can do it right then and there. I'm, I'm so glad you asked that question. So this is, this is wonderful. So for as far as the whole kiosk, so this year what we plan to implement, um, and we also tried it, we also tried it last year at every awareness event we plan on to, we plan to set up stations with computers. So as if, so once the uh, donors come on board, this gets me really excited. So when, when the donors come, no, literally. Yeah. So when the donors, um, when the donors come to these awareness events, they can actually make a decision right then and there. And, and we don't have to give them the form. They can go online, make the decision right then and there. They can go online and donate, search and donate right there. So the plan, the, our plan is this year is to, at every awareness event, is to include um, an outlet and to include a station, uh, you know, with a, com with a computer, with the, with the list right there for them to donate. And so um, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. Yes. And just uh, 
follow up on that real quick. Paper's not going away immediately. It's right. going to be here for at least another five years, and then it'll be reevaluated after that period. Yeah. I, w I want to also just add that um, the platform will also be mobile friendly. That so was going to ask. Yeah. You, can, yeah. you, can pick up, you can pick up your phone and be able to do it and as do well. It. So, who will be providing the kiosks and tablets for the campaign events? So as far in the Department of Navy, uh, we have um, our IT department uh, will most likely have a station computer. Um, and a lot of these um, government employees have a car, you know, what we call cat cards. Um, however, they will be on a secured network um, for them to make their pledge. And so they will be using their own, their, either their own federal uh, computers or will have computers that are, that are our computers, Department of Navy computers, for them to um, make their donations. And it's agency specific because, it's, it's, okay. you know, what yeah. she's describing may not happen at Commerce. Commerce. Right. However, we are, you know, sophisticated enough, especially with this platform, that we will have it be at least mobile enabled, and I think the future for us has to be mobile app. Well, it, so, also, it also makes this training, uh, annual training, uh, even more important each year because what happens in these local markets is they learn from each other. Right. So it's a process not unlike what we have in this room where people get together, they say, oh, here's how we use right. this thing. It worked great. Rama will talk to her yeah. peers. All of a sudden, it'll appear over here. So that's, that's how that works. And this, one big thing that Keith had mentioned at the um, conference was everyone has one of these, right? Everybody has an iPhone. Everybody has a tablet. Um, so if you're not able, you know, you can always pick up your iPhone, you can always pick up your tablet and make your donation right then and there with um, what uh, Stephen uh, Paletta is going to implement. So if, if you want to make a donation and you're ready to make a donation, you really don't have to wait, especially if you have your iPhone, your tablet. Now, if you really, really need to make, you know, you want to go um, with what, I, what we call old school and fill out your form, hey, go right ahead. However, you have to question yourself, is it the most secure way to do it. Um, and so that's, yeah. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, well, I'm looking at this from the donor perspective, donor relationship. Uh, I think it's fabulous that you're putting a lot of, a lot of uh, emphasis on getting the word out, on soliciting, on educating the donors. But from my perspective, it has to do with the thank you from the charity. Mm -hmm. And for years, we've been getting that 122 character printout that we have to take our time and enter into our databases. So has there been any thought about providing those that authorize the release of their information to charities for the purpose of thank you mm -hmm. to be provided electronically? Yes. Um, the, the idea has to be, so anytime we collect additional information from the public, the Office of Management and Budget gets involved, OMB, my friend. Um, <laughs> And so they have this process called uh, data collection. And essentially the data collection for CFC is two, the, 20, the 1417 database and the charity application itself. What we would like to see happen is that when we have the charity application system stood up and online, you enter it then. Whatever thank you message you want to provide is entered into the system, mm -hmm. and then that way it's automatically generated when someone, when a donor makes a gift. Right now, the process that we have now is a pilot, mm -hmm. and um, for those of you who have been hurt or helped by the pilot, you know how limited it is. But we have learned from that pilot experience, and what I expect that we will do at some point is that we will roll it into the collection part of it the application, you already type in whatever. If somebody gives to me, this is my thank you to them online. And then that, it, it goes out to them. Right now, we're, we're, we're waiting months before we thank people for their gift, and that's just not, it's not just the way we should right. be doing business. Hey there, well, I just Hi. have to say, this has been a phenomenal presentation. I used to work for United Way. I've been to many CFC presentations. Never felt energy like this before, so thank you. <laughs> It's true. It's true. This is really exciting. But my question, Keith, goes back to retirees and volunteerism. So I'm currently the, um, the manager of employee engagement in Feeding America. And okay. this is huge because I work with corporate partners every day. And they're asking for those things. How do we get more talent? So my question to you is this. 
you said you need help in kind of updating that executive order. You have a room full of people that know how to use their voice. How can we be advocates for that and, and be part of that process? Well, I'd, I'd hate to release the... You don't want to release the beast, Release huh? everybody <laughs> on the executive office of the president. Um, but letters help. Yeah. Um, I know I've received my share of letters about our regulatory <laughs> process. Um, but I, you know, the whole idea here makes sense to the administration. Yeah. It's always how. How are you going to do it? How are you going to manage it? These are public uh, servants whose salaries are paid from taxpayer dollars. I cannot afford for them to be going off doing stuff that's not related to their mission. So we have to develop a very smart, consistent way to develop a policy that allows employees to give. Maybe it starts on the weekends and it's not during yeah. government hours. And then we can sort of see what is the value proposition for, for doing that in the community and then escalate things going forward. So um, agencies have already responded. It was an interagency comment period for the draft ex executive order that we sent out back in October. We've sent our comments back to the executive office of the president. The other part uh, related to that is the Department of Justice gets involved. And so they have their own set of lawyers are thinking about ethical issues and all the other Risk stuff. management, that, all, that all, stuff. all the things. Yeah. And so, so I'm on the hot seat to answer those questions and respond to them and say, look, at the end of the day, there's already an executive order out there put out by President Bush, um, George Bush, that gives agencies the opportunity to let people volunteer to help in their community. We're just saying link the two. I'm just trying to get the authority, yeah. and then we can work out the particulars on the yep. policy. Um, once I start naming charities, they, yeah. they, they start looking at me like this. <laughs> yeah. um, they want to make sure it's an equal opportunity for any charity that gives an uh, employee an opportunity to volunteer their time. So, yeah. um, so it, it's very important to me that we inject this into the process. But like I said, Susie Sosa is so far down the track. Yeah. I'm starting <laughs> to think that my implementation is already dated once it gets yeah. done. Um, so, but we have to start somewhere. We started, and so I'm ha excited about it. Can, can I just jump on that? Because I think that actually the idea of employee volunteerism among the federal government to support the CFC, the idea has been around for quite some time. And Keith's mm -hmm. absolutely right. It is a it, it's a real big implementation challenge because of all of the constraints that the public servant workforce has on it, whether it's at a state level, national level, doesn't matter. Yet we know based on the research that if you, and I'm an old public relations guy, so there's an old adage that says you increase awareness, you increase understanding, and you increase support. If you just ask people for money once a year, your audience that's going to respond to that could grow, but it's going to be limited. So you've got to connect them in other ways. The challenge in the federal workspace is how do you do that in a way that's consistent with their other policies and the parameters they have to work in? I think the technology is going to help a lot. Right because most of your volunteerism platforms, our Volunteer Match, our own, pla yeah, they're all built on, the ch and this is where you guys come in, on the charities providing the information in a way that is usable by the end user. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's gonna be the key, because federal employees will be able to see it. Right. They might not be able to act on it except after hours, but these are people who kind of have service in their DNA already. They are right. civil servants. So it makes sense on a lot of, a, a lot of levels. And there was a book out called, um, uh, book plug here, uh, Cause for Change, yeah. How to Engage Millennials. Um, yeah. And, you know, again, this isn't limited to millennials, but it makes some very good points that people do rally around a cause. But if I have only 90 of my 140 campaigns that even have websites, mm -hmm. you know, I'm starting, you know, from a huge deficit. This moves us at least into a central form. And then we can start messaging out and using social media in a whole different way. And so, again, I'm excited about the opportunity about rally, you know, cause or just um, awareness in general. So, and just so you're aware that the platform does have volunteer. It's it's just a question of whether we turn it on. When they turn the on. When we turn it on. So basically, and, we built a car and said, okay, give us a basic car, but you know, leave a switch for power windows if we like it. <laughs> leave a switch for XM satellite serious radio if we like it. So this just gets us in the door. 
this platform and then we can start figuring out what do the user communities, what, what are they demanding? What can we push out and, and, and test in terms of communication strategies and then start to evolve and, and adjust and pivot from there? So I know you were all talking about um, you know, notifying the charities about who is giving and everything. So does this affect the timelines? I know now the campaign is in the fall and then we usually get all that information, you no know, spring, summer. And I mean, for WETA where I work, we have membership with donations. So I know a lot of others are probably like that too. So how does, you know, putting, you know, putting the thank you in the application and things like that works, but then there's also other outreach or other mailings you send out. So how does that affect the timeline and everything of that? Well, I, I'm not sure th that our rules will still continue to allow that direct part outside of the solicitation period, and I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about. Um, but we definitely want to make sure that we have a, a uh, presence and a communication strategy to communicate with folks all year. It just may not be the charities themselves. It may be um, the Department of the Navy puts out a blast to their employees, hey, this thing's coming, this is going on, Department of Homeland Security communicating. So I'm not sure if I'm answering your question. But I know the, the current rules are that the CFC itself is still confined to a period of time of active solicitation, but it does not say that we can't communicate throughout the year about things that are going on and differences that are being made by the charities that benefit from the money. I think one other question, I think maybe you were asking also, inside of our charity center is a very robust uh, report, reporting mechanism, which will be real time. So the ability to understand, hey, what are the pledges that are coming through, what, what from a charity standpoint, uh, is going to be very accessible in a very real-time manner, uh, as opposed to potentially some delay to figure out how much money are we getting from here. And then there'll be very, a very clear reporting center around the checks that are being distributed, when they're distributed, for the how charities. they're for yeah. the charities. So there's a lot more uh, visibility into sort of in a real-time manner around the participation and especially around what the charity is going to be receiving. Right, they will still be allowed to release their names. Yeah. You know, we can't mandate it to provide it. And in fact, the executive order protects against that. Um, so if individuals elect to provide their information, release their information, yes. Yeah. I think what Steve is saying is that it, we, you shouldn't have to wait six months right. or four months for that to happen. It should be more accessible to you. And, uh, and part of our job it all, has always been to connect you to the names and the data from those who've released it. Our job will be See, we, we represent you all on right. literally dozens of platforms in workplace giving around the country. The proliferation of technology companies in the space is amazing. So we, whatever the timing is that they work out, the new timing, we'll, we'll sync up with that so that you get that as part of your profile with America's Charities in concert with all the other campaigns, as you always have. Um, I'd like to thank the two Steves, Keith and Rama, for being here. Thank you. <laughs>